Welcome to this video on developing writing fluency. Now many people find research writing to be very difficult, well writing generally to be difficult but research writing in particular and all the complex aspects of it to be even more difficult. And the reason why it is so difficult is because we're working with cognitively complex issues and we're taking cognitively complex thoughts and putting it into writing. So we're working with higher order thinking skills and we're moving from um, accessing knowledge to transforming knowledge as we move from reading and thinking into writing. So all of these are really quite difficult to deal with. So writing fluency is, is the ability to write when, when you want to and what you want to write. So it's the ability to write quickly, appropriately, coherently and creatively when you have scheduled time to write. So it's about being able to sit down and writing, being able to write something immediately without agonizing over every word and every sentence. So writers who don't have writing fluency can't write when they want to. So they will schedule, schedule writing, but then sit at their desks and find themselves unable to write uh, or they find that the writing task is painful and full of anxiety. The so writing fluency is very important particularly in a context where you are expected to write often and large amounts of writing. So you need to be able to write fluently to meet deadlines to engage in regular writing, just generally to be a productive writer. And it's no fun being stuck and feeling like writing is a chore, particularly in this environment where we write a lot. So what stops us from having writing fluency? Well, one of the main things is an overdeveloped internal critical voice. Uh, another key issue is an approach to writing, a personal approach to writing that says writing must be perfect the very first time I sit down to write. And then finally a fixed mindset say, that says other people are born writers but I'm not one of them. So let's look at internal criticism. Now when we were young writers in grade school we could write anything and our teachers and families thought whatever we produced was absolutely wonderful. As we move up through the system, we learn to see our writing in terms of errors and the mistakes we make. We begin to focus less on the message and more on fixing our writing and avoiding mistakes. And by the time we get to graduate school, we are hyper-focused on not making mistakes. So the consequences of this internal critic is, is that if this internal critic is highly developed, it becomes an editor as we write. So we write one sentence and then this internal editor says, no, that's wrong, that's not academic enough, that's not going to be accepted, don't write that. And then we agonize for hours over one sentence or get stuck. When our critical voice is very loud, loud we question everything we write and that, tell, that voice tells us to get up and go do something else because it's much safer than writing. Now that voice is there to protect us, but in this case, it's hindering us, particularly when it comes to writing. So we write from these two different states, the creative state and then this editor or internal critic state.
when we write from the creative state, we need space free from criticism to generate writing. When we write from the editor state, we're in editor mode correcting our errors. And if this voice becomes dominant, then we don't get a chance to generate writing because we go directly to editing. Now this editor state is useful later on. So when you want to edit your writing, this voice is perfectly useful and you can bring it in at that point. But when you want to generate writing, you need to keep that internal editor quiet. So writing fluency happens from this creative state when we can free ourselves from criticism, particularly that self-criticism. Then we can generate lots of ideas and writing. And when we allow the ideas to flow freely, we will have lots of material to work with. So how do we keep this internal editor quiet? The first thing is to become aware of how many negative things you tell yourself as you write. So to become conscious of that voice and what that voice is telling you. And then to actually tell that voice to keep quiet. No one will hear you, you just have to say quietly, okay, keep quiet, uh, until you've finished writing a paragraph or page. And if, if you find it really difficult, then turn off your computer screen until you've finished writing what you intend to write. This will help you to stop going back and correcting all the time. And this is something that I use myself and I use it in all my classes. Um, I'll, I'll give all my students a little toy which will be a tangible representation of that internal editor. And here's a photograph of my desk next to my computer. I have all these internal voices. And if I feel that my critical voice is getting too loud, I will just take one of those and say to them, keep quiet. Just keep quiet until I'm finished writing this paragraph. Now you want to get something that's fairly cute and sweet because you don't want to beat yourself up about your very strong internal critical voice. So you don't want to, you know, bash that voice. It's there to protect you. So the other thing that's really important for writing process, for writing fluency, is the writing process. And this is because many people think that um, writers need to write perfectly the first time they write, and that some people are good writers and they're born like that and others aren't. But really the most productive writers see writing as a process. They recognize that you need to break writing up into stages and, and work on it over time. So these are the most common writing stages. The pre-writing stage where you might do a lot of preparation. Here you're thinking, reading, writing notes and planning for writing. You're doing the thinking part of the writing here. And then you, you might move into a writing stage and this is where you write a draft. And, and here the focus is on the message and getting the whole story down. So it might be messy and it might have big gaps but you're focusing on the story. And then you go into a revision stage where you begin to craft the document until it's finished. So you're not trying to do all of these stages and everything that is involved in one step. Now one of the reasons why we break up writing into these different stages is to acknowledge that as we write we think. So instead of trying to do all our thinking and writing at once, we recognize that our thinking might get deeper and more complex as we revise drafts. So this is really important for writing and if you can only remember one mantra this would be it. Get something down and then fix it up. The first draft is always awful and it's for your eyes only. You'll have big gaps, you'll have um, sections where you'll say fill this in later, you might not have your sources in there, but as you, as you revise your drafts you will go back and fill all of that in and your writing will get better. So I want to move on to a couple of techniques now that will help with writing fluency. They'll help keep this critical voice down and help to free up your writing process. And the three are free writing, concept ma maps and sketching.
Free writing is a technique made popular by Peter Elbow in 1973 and it can really help to generate writing and keep that critical voice quiet. So this is a, techni a technique where you set a timer for about 5 or 10 minutes and write until the timer goes off. During this time you just keep moving forward, you don't go back, you don't cross out, you don't correct your writing. If you get stuck and don't know what to write, you just keep writing, I don't know what to write, until you've finished. And there are two ways to use free writing. One is um, where you just generate your initial thoughts, so you're at the beginning of a process and you write to know what you're thinking about a particular thing. And then directed free writing, and this is where you would have done a lot of preparation and planning and you know what you want to write, but then you allow yourself to free write it. You're clear about the purpose in this instance and what you might include. So once you've finished your free write, that's when you go back, you edit the passage, you take what is relevant and you delete the rest. So you won't always keep everything that you free write, but you will find that it helps you to generate writing. And there are lots of videos on YouTube on free writing if you want to find um, some more information on this. The second technique is concept maps and it's very similar to free writing except that um, we're, we're just looking at words here. So concept maps are also known as spider diagrams or mind maps and this is a mechanism for capturing ideas. Again you set the timer because this keeps a critical voice quiet and you write down ideas on a topic. You don't worry about crossing out or making mistakes. You write quickly and here you use colour, pattern and symbols and that's to make your voice, your brain make these lateral connections. So here's an example of a, a concept map that I developed when I was preparing a workshop on writing an evaluation report. So you can see that you can put down a huge amount of information which you can then go into afterwards and decide what you want to keep, what you don't need and what will be useful. So once the time is up, you go through your ideas, you make decisions about what to keep. And you can also structure your writing using mind maps and concept maps. They really are very useful because you don't have to use full sentences and you can represent large amounts of information on one sheet of paper. Again, there are videos on YouTube if you want to uh, research this a bit further. The third technique is sketching. Now there's some disciplines where people are very used to sketching in order to think, but there are other disciplines where it's not very common. But sketching can be a really useful pre-writing technique because it allows you to see what, what you're about to write holistically on one page. So it shows the relationships and connections of things in a way that you really can't do with linear writing. Now you don't have to be an artist. We're talking about stick figure drawings or using symbols and using basic shapes. But whatever your skill level is, it's, it's an extremely useful technique for getting the whole picture down on one page. So for example, you could sketch your methodology chapter. One of the examples I use in my class all the time is this one. Draw your thesis or draw your chapter as, as if it were on a stage. So what is center stage, what is off stage, who are the main actors, what's in the background, who's in the audience and so on. And this really will help you to see what's important in your research and what you're thinking about but perhaps would be in the background um, and who's off, off stage ready to come on stage. So all these techniques will really help with writing fluency and I suggest using them in combination. So for example, if you do a concept map, then do a free write immediately afterwards. Or if you do a sketch, follow it up with a free write. And all these bits and pieces of free writes will help you to think deeper and, and in more complex ways about your writing and help to build the first draft. 
So just to go over the key points of this video and the main points that I'm trying to get across here is that writing fluency is really important in our context, particularly because we write a lot. And keeping that internal editor quiet is so important when we generate writing. We can bring it back in later. Writing is a process and this process includes preparing, getting something down and then fixing it up. And there are a number of techniques that can help us achieve this. Thank you for watching this video on writing fluency.